Thanks for joining us today. I'm going to show you and present a tutorial that is go it's going to be able to show you how a Shiny app can improve your visualization results based on ggplot. Well, R has become one of the gold standard software for statistical research and its uh, community is widely active and it has developed upon itself a programming framework called ggplot2 for visualization of data. This is highly popular among publications and it generates a specific results that it's individual plots for each of the ones that the user is it's demanding. But when it comes to big data, ggplot is not efficient enough because the amount of information generated by the researchers uh, overpasses greatly the capacity of one single plot. So for this, the R response is Shiny, which is a reactive programming language that, it, that allows big data exploration and it's able to provide control of the graph to any user. At the end, as you will see, Shiny app is even capable of, in, of independently show graph without any intervention of ggplot. So the main result of the Shiny app use is to generate tools based on our statistical programming. So let's uh, give me a clear example. Let's imagine that we have a whole genome statistics uh, given by this score field on this ex example file. And we have this score for every amino acid of every gene on the genome. So if I would like to see the results, I will have to make an R script uh, based on ggplot. And I have two possibilities, to get one graph at a time or actually create thousands of graphs within the loop. This is not efficient. And what happens if I want to do additional questions? I will have to repeat the process all over again. Uh, in a practical example, here we have a ggplot code that generates a graph based on the statistics score that I showed you before. So it grabs a file and generates a plot specific for each, each gene. In this example, I'm showing you the, uh, how these uh, scores uh, chose for green to, green to A. If I wanted to change the gene, I will have to edit the code and make uh, an additional graph. And what happens if I want to do an additional question? For example, locate uh, patterns within the amino acid con contained in the linear sequence of this gene. Here, I provide a search for NRT amino acids within the sequence. This is a completely different graph and requires additional coding. So this is a linear programming. That means that each line is executed one at a time. But what happens when I want to do this in a Chinese approach? First, I would like to explain uh, how Chinese works. So, it grabs the ggplot that I showed you before and uh, builds it inside a server side, which is called server.r. Then this is the part that does all the calculations. And then it talks to another file called uh, user interface, .r also, that translates every information generated on the server side and, uh, into HTML and provide a framework for browser visualization. So how does it look the same analysis on a reactive perspective? Here I have an R session already with a, a server side that, as you can see, contains the same ggplot inside the server side, but in a reactive, um, in a reactive context. That is that every calculation and assignment of all the variables, all the possible variables uh, on the whole genomes are containing this reactive uh, context uh, that, you, as you can see, for example, this linear value, it's generated within the reactive context, context here. And this value changes when, whenever I make another uh, query. This can be everything that I would like. 
and then on the user interface side, I have the commands that will allow me to see the results. So immediately when I run the app, I see that my browser opens and I get a list of all genes that I have a score for. So for example, here I will see how my score behaves with ABCB1 gene. And I get a similar plot without generating any file on my computer. Then if I want to change, I will just put press submit again and get a, another graph. And what if I want to ask uh, for amino acid patterns inside this graph? I can do it immediately. For example, I will ask for system inside the code and the graph immediately show, show me where these systems are located. If I want to get more complex, I will add more amino acids and I still get the patterns inside the sequence. Then again, I can change to any gene that I want and um, see the same annotation. So as you can see, this provides me with a framework on, on which, upon which I'm, a, I'm able to explore all of my genome-wide results in a familiar way without using any memory on my, on my computer, without writing any files. So I will come back to my presentation and show you that this, the user interface uh, can get a lot of more complex since it is designed to integrate HTML code and CSS code, while the server side only talks within an R environment and gets the plots based on ggplot2. So if I wanted to add a more friendly interface to my, uh, to my tiny app, it will look something like this. Here I will show you. Um, another shiny app, which is a bit more complex. As you can see here on the server side, I have my ggplot, but I will also integrate uh, some Zoom uh, coding for the plot in order to change the, um, the visualization and then uh, integrate also a brush table. You will see how this will work in years. On the user interface side, I, you can see that it's a bit more complex, but not many lines more than in comparison with the uh, simple version of the user interface. So when you add additional code based on HTML, you can actually uh, generate, also based on R, a more friendly uh, and interactive way of showing the results. Here you can see the same code on, again, on a web browser, and see result, the result here. I can also do my search of uh, specific amino acids and where are they located. And then I see where I can browse the table and see the individual input that generates this graph. That is the original data. I can see it over here. And, exp uh, and thus I can explore my results. I can also, with a double click, zoom my graph and see more deep regions of my results. And I can keep uh, doing my, uh, and I can change immediately my gene, for example, here. So you can see here that the coding of the app, while based on the same results, can get quite more complex and uh, complete and you can provide uh, a lot of tools to any, to any user to explore your data and, uh, and in order for them to ask their own questions. So the final stage of making a Chiny app, while I already show you how the results may look, is also to make the app uh, deployed over the internet. This will allow internet as access to my data to any user uh, connected to the internet. And also, it will avoid any interface with, with the actual uh, coding of the platform. So the final user only asks the questions and the, do not make the code. So the main 
path to do this is to actually to make your environment, your home environment, virtual and upload it to uh, cloud services so, such as Amazon and Google Cloud Platform. These uh, platforms are able to make standalone apps that do not need any intervention of the, the producer of the data. But there is also uh, an easy option that is also provided by Chiny, which is called Chiny.io, where, where once you establish your own connection and you make an account, a free account, into ChinaApps.io, that it's uh, also make, uh, made by a Chinese app tool, as you can see here for, from the format. Once you install this uh, application, you are able to upload your application with just one click, which is this icon here. If I will press uh, this button, it will uh, this application will get immediately uploaded to the internet without any further configuration. So I have already uploaded the the plus application that I've shown you. So if you want to see it, here is my dashboard of my shiny apps that all application. And then if you just click here, which is the address that I gave it to, to the app, you will see that the application is already up and it doesn't have any connection to my R Studio here. So, uh, here I show you uh, the button to upload the application and you only need, of course, a proper directory to uh, upload your stats. I hope that I have convinced you of the potential of using Chinese apps to browse and upload your data to the scientific community. And I also wanted to tell you that there is a lot to learn on reactive programming. It's not as straightforward as R is, but there are a lot of free tools available for learning this type of approach. So thanks a lot, and I hope this information is useful to you.